Everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series, the Unported Playlist, where I take out some of my favorite unported arcade games of all time. And today, I can't say it's one of my favorite, but it's very interesting. It is Vicious Circle by Atari, another canceled prototype fighting game from Atari headquarters. Before we get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But on some of these unported playlist episodes where I talk about prototypes that didn't make it out onto main release, I say I think it could have been finished and people would have enjoyed it. With Vicious Circle, I could 100% see why this game was cancelled. It is not downright bad, but all the concepts they're going for, they're just not executing on correctly. You could see all the flaws almost off the top. This ran on the Atari Co-Jag hardware, which is basically an Atari Jaguar with expanded specs, or at least that's what the internet would leave you to believe. There's only a few of these boards still out there in existence, and it's not like I can look at a photo. But you can tell right off the top, the game definitely isn't finished. The character shadows are just little blocks, little rectangles. And I'm not trying to pronounce that name, I was going to call him Click Clack, does that make sense? You can just see right behind him, it's that weird rectangle. But it is a full motion video fest. Everything in the background is running just like a video would. And it kind of reminds me of Carnival, except as a fighting game. That game also had full motion pre-rendered videos in the background with polygons up front. Completely different genre, a lot better game, but the same sort of design concept. The reason that Vicious Circle doesn't work is it's just not a very good fighting game. Definitely seems like they were trying to ape off Killer Instinct at least a little bit, but there's so many weird things in the game, including combo limiters. If you hit enough hits in a row, the game is going to say not now, and it's basically going to block your inputs, which makes it seem like maybe you could infinite combo pretty much everyone in the game. And they were trying to get away from that being a possibility and they don't let you put certain inputs in it is impossible to say what that was there for because it's not like the game release and there's not many people talking about it but another thing is the ai for your opponent is just broken i am just sitting here letting edge do whatever he wants and he's just gonna run back and forth hop around and never actually attack me some of the cpu controlled characters just do absolutely nothing i just sat here and let the time run out on the game so if you want to play this game definitely play it with a second player because as a one player experience it is completely useless and pointless to even try to enjoy it because the code is not finished but i do like the backgrounds it's not just always full motion video there's a very interesting parallax effect going on with those pre-rendered backgrounds so they do some things with the technology that you wouldn't normally expect a game like this to do and i would say at least from a technical standpoint there are some very interesting ideas on display in vicious circle unfortunately this is a situation where the form does not follow the function the form is quite nice i.e the graphics the function the gameplay of a 2d fighting game is just not there and i'm sure once this was on location test fighting game fans probably told atari exactly what they thought which was to say it's just not a good fighting game and therefore it gets cancelled that makes perfect logical sense it just wasn't that good but from an arcade history perspective i love talking about prototype games their development and whether or not they should have come out because a lot of times 99 out of 100 people that watch this video are going to say I did not know what Vicious Circle was, I had no idea it even existed. Even the screen transitions aren't great, they're way too short, they made all this art and they don't really give you much of a chance to look at it. But at least the stages are creative, we have these giant chains which look like they're descending down into hell and you have that fire effect in the background. It looks nice for its time and place, it just doesn't play that well and that is the unfortunate part. And the sound effects sound like they're borrowed from other things, they don't sound final, but the soundtrack is there and it's halfway decent, nothing great. But go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds or so, leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think of the sound, and I'll come back and talk more about the history of Vicious Circle in just a second.
I mean, it's definitely a vibe and it's kind of like a rock horror soundtrack and I think it works okay, but it definitely isn't that great. And you will see here that the screen centering just goes all across the board on this game. I had to move so many different screens around in post and even then nothing would really perfectly line up. So you can definitely tell whatever display hardware they were using for this was struggling as well or they hadn't at least finished that up, unfortunately. But I mean, hey. It's a fun game to check out with your friends. If you have two players going on this, you will at least get away from that AI that either completely decimates you or doesn't do anything whatsoever. But if you're actually playing this against the CPU, you may as well not bother unless you really want to see something as resting because that just seems to be what's going on here. It is wholly unfinished. But FMV video and video games was huge back in the day and the Kojak hardware was used for other things like Area 51. But hey, every once in a while, if you mash the right buttons, you can get a fatality and it's a video and she's just uh, impaled on that ice stake right there. That's the only time I've ever been able to get a fatality out, and I have absolutely no idea what I did to do it. I just kept mashing buttons when I had the opportunity, and finally something worked out. Because it's not like you're going to find many published move lists for Vicious Circle. This isn't the type of game that 99 out of 100 people are even going to want to play. But I love it from the history perspective. You can see what the developers at Atari were going for with this. Something, a fighting game like Mortal Kombat mixed with Killer Instinct. The market was saturated with fighting games and every developer wanted their piece of the action and this was Atari's attempt to try to do that. They figured what would work well. A fighting game with blood that had fatalities a la Mortal Kombat, but a look that kind of felt like Killer Instinct, which was also a very popular game in its time and place. The thing about trying to be an also ran, a game that's trying to capitalize on other game successes in the industry, is that generally those games end up being less than the sum of the source parts they're trying to be inspired by. And that's definitely a situation here. So would I have canceled Vicious Circle if I was in charge of it in Atari back in the day? I 100% would have, no question about that. And that's not a dig on the developers, they were doing the best they could, and the Atari Jaguar is a notoriously difficult console to deal with, so it's not surprising at all that this is struggling. But on the other side of the coin, it's also not finished, so it's impossible really to judge. Maybe this is only a 40% build, and maybe the final product would have been something that I would say I do recommend as kind of a BT or fighting game. And that's the danger in trying to review or even talk about a prototype, is you really can't with any definitive certainty say what you think the game would have been like had it been finished, because you just can't tell based upon the current build. And like you see right there, I've only ever been able to do one fatality, and I don't know how I did it. But if you didn't grow up in this era of arcade games, you might wonder why they were going for all this video stuff. It was just a way to make the visuals more presentable without taxing the actual hardware. The Kojag had a hard drive so you could keep that full motion video on the hard drive and spool it in just playing as that video and it wasn't really using any of the processing power to put those graphics on screen or render them. It was just playing back a file and that's why you see things like this being so popular. Even Midway getting on the game, like I said, with Carnival, using polygons for the opponents you would shoot and using full motion video for the background. But yeah, even this intro, it just screams 90s in the best way possible. This is what games looked like back in the day if they had enough storage medium to show something like a full motion video. This was just the vibe. It kind of looked like a C tier Blade Runner futuristic city and there's these metallic people and there must be some sort of story going on here. It's just not included in this prototype. You really have no clue what actually is happening. But I do like this hall here where you get your opponents even if it only lasts for like 3-4 seconds and this dude just mauling somebody behind that grave. It's kind of a fun time. But leave me a comment down below and you tell me. Would you have wanted to play this game? Now that you've seen the video, do you want to check it out? I always recommend checking prototypes out, even if just for 10 minutes. Get a sense of what could have been. Short of that, I'll be back next Monday with an episode of Unported Playlist. I'll have videos the week as well. But yeah, Vicious Circle, it makes sense why it got cancelled. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.